All right, folks, now we're going to be moving to the last talk before our break. And I re highly recommend to, you know, take, go and take a look to the networking events you have, we have for this conference. Um, so without further ado, we're going to be inviting Phil Nash from Twilio. Let's see if we can have you on the stage. Hello. Hello, Phil. How are you doing today? Hey, I am good, thank you. Yes, All right. you are. They're, they're telling me you're based in Melbourne, Australia. So that's probably 9 a.m. in your side as well. Oh, I'm afraid New Zealand are a couple of hours ahead of me. It is quarter past seven in the morning here. <laughs> All right. You got a coffee and everything you need? Or? I, I've had a coffee already. I've got through that just to make sure everything is, uh, uh, is, you guys is going to work. Be already, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys seem to also be very prepared about this. That's that's great. All right, folks. So Phil, he's a developer evangelist at Twilio. He's been working in the company for quite some time. He's going to be sharing with us. Um, he's ex learning and understanding and experiences from um, building CLI um, using APIs and how we can leverage the same experience he had to maybe be, do a, to a better job on our side. So without further ado, I'm going to be getting out of the stage and Phil, <laughs> you can take it away. Thank you very much, Vincenzo. Uh, and yes, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending on uh, where you are uh, in API days. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm excited to be talking with you uh, from, uh, yes, early morning over here. Um, so uh, yeah, as we said, my name's Phil Nash. I'm a developer evangelist at Twilio. I've been there for almost seven years, uh, doing various things around developer evangelism. And um, uh, and this is uh, kind of where you can uh, get me online anywhere that you need. So I am Phil Nash all over the place, uh, Twitter, GitHub, LinkedIn, come and find me, come say hi. Uh, if you ever have any questions about uh, you know whatever I'm talking about or about Twilio in general, um, then drop me, a line, drop me an email at philnash at uh, twilio.com. Now, hopefully, uh, you have heard of Twilio before. Uh, if you've been hanging around at, uh, at API Days, uh, you know we kicked off with uh, with Twilio CEO, CEO Jeff Lawson. But if you don't know, uh, Twilio is uh, is an API for communications uh, and and so much more. Uh, you know, if you uh, if you need to send a text message, make a phone call, send an email, do anything that's going to connect people online, uh, then Twilio is the API uh, for you. And uh, and so. I've been working with this API for, like I said, a long time now. And uh, and a couple of years ago, we actually decided that we needed to um, think about, uh, you know, how we can improve that uh, API experience uh, for our developers. Uh, you know, we, we've we've done our best work to to build uh, an API that is is worth using and is uh, is a lot of fun to use and is is um, hopefully easy to use. But can it be easier? Can it be a better experience? And and so that's led me to. Uh, to today, where I get to talk to you about hopefully better API DX with the CLI. Um, now we all know an API is an application program interface, and hopefully we're all up on the terms kind of developer experience DX. Uh, that's where we put the capital letters in the middle of the letters in the middle of the words now, and then CLI that command line uh, interface. Um, and we want to yeah improve this uh, developer experience with the CLI. Um, so developer experience, I think, is a really interesting thing that has grown out of uh, um, th this API uh, economy that we live in, because uh, just providing a service as, a, as an API is, is no longer good enough. You have to be, the, you have to be an, a great experience for developers in order to um, have them want to use your API. Uh, and so that experience goes all the way from that API design, which hopefully we we know what we're doing with, to more tools and more things around it, uh, the console, the documentation. Uh, it's a whole range of things. Uh, and so I'm only kind of talking about a very small sliver of developer experience here, but hopefully one that uh, that we also agree is something that developers enjoy. So as I said, we, we went and built uh, a CLI, a command line interface, to deal with the Twilio API um, and make it uh, better for developers to use. Um, it's available uh, to download uh, and you can run it from your command line as, as, as Twilio. Um, I can tell you a bit about how it's built to start with. Um, it is built uh, in Node.js, it's built with JavaScript. Uh, and I'll tell you a bit about why we did that uh, in a bit. Uh, it uses Oakliff, which is a library uh, built by Heroku uh, that they built their uh, CLI in. Uh, and so that is a battle-tested and hardened uh, uh, framework for, for CLIs that has allowed us to be very productive with it. Uh, and then you can install it using uh, uh, NPM and or uh, uh, Homebrew if you're on a Mac, uh, 
we've tried to make that as, as installable as possible, although I think that could maybe be better. We can get to that as well. Um, there, there are trade-offs here, of course. Um, I do want to say, by the way, uh, do have um, <laughs> before I get into any demos or anything, I do want to say, like, we are in a live event. So if you do have anything you want to say, just drop things into the chat. I'm, I'm always excited to kind of uh, see what people are thinking uh, as we talk about these things. So uh, say hi uh, in, in, in chat if you're there as well. Uh, and drop me any questions as we go along. I'll try to either answer them as we go, or we have time at the end to, to answer questions too. Uh, so back to the point, though. Uh, we built the CLI. Uh, it's a JavaScript open source project as well, just to, just to make sure. Um, and of course, before we went about building this, we wanted to you know, have a plan for building a CLI. Uh, and the important thing there is, is your audience. Uh, and so, of course, not everyone is here to use a CLI. Not everybody uh, using Twilio today uh, wants to, to do so uh, in a, just a text-based interface on their command line, and that's fine. Uh, and for, you know, we have built other things as part of the uh, API offering, such as Twilio Studio, which is a drag and drop visual editor for uh, for things. So not everyone wants to use a CLI. However, we did have a hypothesis that one uh, developers may prefer the command line to that to that console inside the browser, um, and secondly, that uh, developers wanted to automate Twilio actions with their other command line tooling. Uh, and so we wanted to build this CLI to uh, to talk to uh, speak to both of those hypotheses and, and solve those problems uh, for our developers. Now, not all CLIs are created equal. I'm saying this because uh, there is plenty of work we could do. That, like, a CLI is just another program, and there's plenty of work that we can do within that to make life uh, easier or not uh, for people using it. Um, uh, and so when it came to building a CLI we uh, and the things around it, uh, I had kind of three questions uh, to, to ask. Like, what's the minimum a CLI for an API, and this is specifically for, uh, for an API, can do to be useful? And then, you know, what can you add to that CLI to make it a better experience? And finally, uh, what can your users add to the CLI? See, uh, uh, in order to make a better experience, we have to open up not just um, the minimum functionality that we expect out of the CLI, but, but how can we extend it in order to actually create that developer experience that we're looking for? And then if we can't extend it that far, how can we allow users of the CLI to extend it further? So that minimum viable CLI, uh, I think, is made up of a couple of parts. Uh, again, we're talking about a, uh, CLIs for APIs here. So that minimum viable CLI should probably and include commands for all of your API endpoints. That one seems like a, a, a no-brainer, I guess, but uh, we're talking about that, this minimum uh, uh, section of stuff. Second up, documentation. Like, not only the, the endpoints and commands for those endpoints, but they're actually they, those endpoints should be documented uh, as well. That's super important because this API, uh, sorry, the CLI may end up being used for um, the uh, uh, use of finding out uh, about those commands uh, as you kind of plug them into the thing. And uh, and again, moving uh, moving people using the CLI from the terminal uh, back to the browser in order to check the documentation uh, is not a great experience. So documenting things uh, up front is really useful. And then you probably want to generate all of these commands. Uh, hopefully, you have uh, some kind of API specification uh, open API spec or, or your own custom thing uh, with which you can uh, generate these things. Because uh, if you are building an API, uh, you probably are ad adding endpoints, adding ways to use it, uh, and keeping having the CLI keep up with that uh, doesn't need to be an extra overhead uh, to your development process. Uh, so if you can generate those from that uh, from your specs, you're going to have a better time, and uh, people using the CLI will have a better time as well because they won't they won't fall behind uh, the API. Uh, and following that, um, secure credential storage uh, seems important uh, to the CLI as well. And it's important that it's it's secure, even though this has caused us um, multiple problems with uh, with um, certain JavaScript dependencies. But I'm not going to go into that today. Uh, but being able to store your account credentials uh, so that you can use them again and again, like logging in with the CLI, uh, is, um, is, is important. Um, 
So yeah, so uh, I will just drop out to, uh, ooh, hello, there we go. Uh, I've got a terminal right here. And uh, and so we can see that um, if I run the Twilio command, it tells me about what it can do. Uh, and uh, and really, like there's a load of commands there, but everything I've just talked about right now basically sits under uh, the API command. And, uh, uh, and as you can see here, here are all the APIs that now Twilio kind of um, give you access to. Uh, so, and all of these endpoints, all of these are, are, are generated and based on all of the APIs that we have uh, available. Oh, and uh, secure credential storage is absolutely there. Uh, so we have, um, uh, if I can spell, uh, like a, a way to list your profiles as well. Um, you can't use any of those details. So that's fine. Uh, so this is, I am, I'm logged into three different accounts there uh, and can choose and, and use any one of them that I want. Uh, so ticked off uh, those kind of minimum things, I can use this CLI to call the API from my account. Uh, and if I want to know a bit more about a command, let's uh, go look at Tilio API call messages uh, list help, for example. Uh, that's gonna tell me, uh, well, that's going to tell me a bunch of stuff, like what the command does, and then all the potential uh, information that you need to provide to that command. Cool. Let's talk about having a better built-in experience, because that is, you know, that, that's our minimum stuff. How do we get better uh, than that? Um, so uh, uh, as I already said, like we've got this, uh, this, this Twilio API, and if you, uh, if you do, um, uh, run this, and this is, oh, uh, no, wait, I know what I'm going to do. Um, having that API thing up front is great, and being able to run help on things uh, in order to see what you need to provide uh, and get that documentation uh, is a good experience, but there's much more to it. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you a bunch of stuff here. Uh, we've got autocomplete, shortcuts, further APIs, feedback, and extra capabilities for those specific APIs. Um, so let's have a look first. Autocomplete is super important. Uh, for this kind of discovery of APIs, uh, especially when you have a bunch of them. So if I run Twilio API and then hit tab, I have autocomplete, but it's also going to tell me that there's 1,056 possibilities uh, that I can complete. So we have a bunch of APIs these days, uh, and you may have more, you may have less uh, in your API, but um, you never probably want to have to type out all 1,056 things. Uh, so running autocomplete allows me to, whoa, there they all are. Uh, let's stop that. <laughs> Uh, autocomplete uh, is then is therefore really useful, so you don't have to type everything out. And having a command inside it to set up uh, autocomplete, I think that's a, a really nice little touch that uh, any API, or sorry, any CLI can can provide. And if you've already generated uh, all of your commands, then you can generate an autocomplete file in order to uh, to make using them that much easier. Uh, cool. Extra, uh, what did I say? Shortcuts. All right, brilliant. So this is our upfront experience. And now we're kind of looking at what this Twilio command does beyond uh, just the API uh, command. Um, so autocomplete is one of them. Uh, and let's move to uh, our next one, which is uh, kind of API shortcuts. Now, uh, if we kind of go Twilio uh, API, we can look at the core and then uh, incoming phone numbers, and we can uh, uh, kind of start buying phone numbers. This is the thing we can do with the Twilio API, uh, but that is a rather painful, painfully long uh, command to actually have to write out. Uh, and so for phone numbers, which is something you expect to uh, do a bunch of admin with, uh, we have a shortcut to it. And so we can list our phone numbers, for example. Uh, and here's the one phone number I have inside my account. Uh, and so that's a nice little shortcut, but um, there's much more to phone numbers. You can buy phone numbers and, and interact with them. Uh, and so uh, buying a phone number via the API is a bunch of API steps in a row in which you search for them and then pick one and then decide to buy it and then add that to your account and update it later. Uh, but being able to shortcut that, not only uh, with, a, with a shorter command here, but uh, being able to buy, say, uh, a mobile number uh, in, oops. And the autocomplete works on the uh, 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 flags as well. Um, if I want to buy a mobile number in Australia, for example, 
uh, not only is it going to give me that list, but actually gives me an interactive experience uh, with which to uh, go ahead and buy this. I'm not going to buy any new phone numbers right now, but as you can see, I just move through these and decide to purchase as we go. Um, and Toyo phone numbers has uh, oops, a couple of other things, I think. Ah, yes. Um, so finally, you can update the properties of a Twilio number. Uh, and uh, as, as API days kind of attendees, you're probably aware of, of webhooks and how they work in terms of an API. Um, but testing webhooks has always been uh, a difficult thing for developers. Uh, and so we wanted to um, add some extra shortcuts to that as well. And one, I think, really smart thing, and this is not my idea. Uh, most of this is not my idea. I'm just excited to talk about the CLI. But um, one of the things we've done is uh, is to um, if you take a phone number, oh, let's let's find mine, uh, and I can update my phone number. Update, um, uh, and to do so, it's this phone number, and uh, I can set say the uh, SMS URL to uh, to local host. Um, if I had uh, uh, something running on, say, localhost port 3000, um, what this is actually going to do is it's not going to, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, HTTP colon slash slash localhost 3000. Um, uh, it's going to try and update that, but it's going to recognize that it, I'm using a local uh, URL. And this actually starts up ngrok to create a tunnel uh, and then takes that ngrok URL and sets that on the phone number. So this makes testing phone numbers and locally running applications with webhooks really, really easy. Um, and it's, it's almost a hidden feature, this. If you didn't know, to, <laughs> we try and tell people. But uh, uh, if you don't know, if you know you can set the SMS URL or the voice URL to, to localhost, uh, then testing yeah, becomes super easy. I'm going to stop that right now. Uh, so yeah, um, shortcuts like that. Uh, and ex a great bet, yeah, better experiences uh, with those shortcuts is just one of the one of the things. Uh, I like that Vicenzo has gone to Negroni over Ngrok uh, straight away there in the chat. That's um, uh, it must be that time of the day for you already. Uh, a little early in the morning here, though. Uh, but yes, uh, running up Ngrok automatically is uh, is just a joy. Uh, so let's go back to our list of commands and see what else we've got. Um, so those are our shortcuts. We added extra APIs as well, though. Um, uh, and this is a, a, a silly little one, but you can see there amongst the commands we have uh, Twilio email. Uh, and we can use that to send uh, email addresses, uh, in this case, using your Twilio SendGrid account. Uh, those accounts are, are still kind of separate APIs at the moment after, after we bought SendGrid a while back. but. Um, uh, uh, being able to add this to the API, uh, to the CLI, just makes a, a nice little experience there. Uh, cool. So we can add those extra APIs. Uh, there's also, um, what are we going for? Feedback. Um, when you're building something that you are trying to improve the experience uh, of something for, for developers, for anybody using it, uh, one absolute key thing is to get feedback for it. And so, uh, another little thing that I think is wonderful in, in, uh, employed by the, the core team that built this uh, is just a, a way to, uh, you see the command when you run uh, Twilio help. Uh, and uh, sure, this is a real simple message uh, that links you out to a, to a form, but being able to collect that feedback is just super important. And if you want to uh, get the feedback, you've got to give people the way to, uh, to, to access it. Um, so yeah, we're always striving to make this better. And we want to uh, we want people to add their feedback, and then finally, extra capabilities for specific APIs. Uh, I think I kind of covered a bunch of that in terms of the phone numbers thing, uh, but um, yeah, that those extra capabilities are are, are absolutely crucial. Um, that is what I meant. Yes. All right. Uh, so again, just that experience working with. Um, with phone numbers and buying them and having that interactive experience uh, is something that you can create as part of a CLI. Uh, and when you do, uh, it's just going to make things a lot nicer. So that's kind of a better built-in experience. Uh, but that's still only step two of what we can do uh, with uh, a CLI. 
because uh, this is all the stuff that the kind of core team for the CLI has been able to contribute. But in order to really capture what, what people want to use this for, we want to be able to allow external people to contribute to the experience as well. Uh, and so this is where the plugin section works. And so I mentioned earlier that we built this, uh, this entire CLI in, in JavaScript using Node.js. Uh, it's actually, well, I think it's actually in TypeScript uh, for the most part, but it's in, it eventually runs JavaScript. It's eventually Node. Uh, and uh, being able to have other people um, either work on it from within Twilio or provide plugins to it using a language that um, is so widely used and so widely understood uh, allows for the widest possible amount of people to uh, add to it. And so when you have a plugin capa uh, capability to that CLI, uh, and again, this, uh, this plugin capability kind of comes from Oakliff. Uh, in fact, there is a plugin to Oakliff that allows you to create plugins for your CLI. So it's a plugin plugin, which is hard to talk about, but uh, really useful at the end of the day. Um, uh, and so, uh, so Oakliff is this JavaScript framework giving us the CLI framework. Uh, gives us this plugin framework that allows then people to build in JavaScript as well, uh, and and allows them to add further capabilities. So um, let's uh, let's take a quick look there, because uh, there's a bunch of um, the commands here that I didn't mention yet, um, but uh, uh, you can see uh, if I actually hit Twilio plugins list. Oh. Twilio plugins. Uh, these are my installed plugins right now. Uh, I have uh, an assets one, flex one, serverless, and a third party one for, for Twilio Autopilot. Um, and uh, and so each of these has been like uh, provided by people who are not working on the CLI core team, but uh, but are able to add capabilities to it as well. Uh, I actually work on two of these plugins that I have installed right now: uh, the serverless plugin and the assets plugin. Um, both part of what we call the Twilio Serverless Toolkit. Uh, and this uh, allows you to, uh, this gives us the serverless um, uh, namespace here. And so this is further adding to that experience where uh, we have an API, uh, sorry, so Twilio has a, a kind of serverless section which uh, allows you to host and run uh, JavaScript files and, and uh, serve static assets. Uh, really useful for knocking together a, an API quickly uh, or an app quickly that uses the Twilio API and is hosted within Twilio as well. But working with that locally uh, was uh, not a thing that existed in the first place until uh, myself and a colleague, uh, uh, Dominic Kundal, um, put together uh, a couple of uh, applications that allowed you to generate and run a Twilio Functions project locally. Then uh, the, an API came for this Functions thing to be able to deploy to it, but the API uh, itself is really for building tools with. Uh, and so the, the API uh, does exist out in the world under uh, the serverless API. Um, and you know, we have uh, API services, uh, sorry, function services, and, uh, and then within those services, a lot of other stuff. Uh, so when you want to deploy something, you create a service, you create an environment, you create a build, you create functions and assets for that build, and then you take the build put it all together with environment variables and dependencies and push it to uh, uh, an environment. All of that is really useful, but you don't want to do that individually. And so the uh, Twilio serverless plugin has commands like uh, deploy, which takes a, a project that you can run um, locally uh, using Twilio serverless start and does all of those API operations for you. Uh, and the best thing is, like the um, t the CLI team didn't have to build this. The Twilio Functions team didn't have to build this. This was built by people using using functions and wanting to uh, to to do this kind of thing. So um, serverless command works like that. Uh, and uh, uh, we have other plugins. These are the other ones available. The Flex plugin then allows you to build. <laughs> this is great. Uh, for build plugins for Twilio Flex, so it's a plugin plugin as well. But uh, and we can also uh, show kind of other available plugins that are around and available to install. Uh, and so there are easy ones here, like plug the Watch plugin uh, allows you to um, tail kind of logs and uh, errors and things from the Twilio console without leaving your uh, environment. Uh, token plugin allows you to create JSON web tokens that are available. Uh, 
uh, uh, for using for chat or video services uh, with Twilio. So all of these things then get to be uh, in very much uh, like the JavaScript um, development. Um, completely lost myself there. Um, like like uh, like npm, for example, right, where you can make small modules. Uh, that do specific things uh, and are maintained by people who care about that one piece of functionality rather than some kind of monolithic uh, CLI. Now, our CL the main CLI is kind of monolithic, but that's because it's all generated uh, API commands. Um, but being able to add other specific use cases to it uh, that can be generated by and maintained by uh, somebody who doesn't need to know the entire CLI uh, is really useful. And of course, we have people building their own private plugins for their own private uses uh, as well. So um, building a CLI for an API, uh, as I said at the near the start, the, there's kind of three questions for it. And these are the three things I think that you should think about when you're choosing to build your own CLI uh, for your own API. And that is, what is the minimum that the CLI can do to be useful? Uh, and as we said, that is to uh, you know generate all the API commands, all the things that uh, you want to actually be able to call the API from the CLI, and document it, and keep uh, keep hold of um, credentials securely. Uh, and without those, um, you know, the, the is it really a CLI for your API? We need that minimum. And you know, you might have different minimum um, things in mind for your own. That's what I thought for ours. Further, what can you add to the CLI to make it a better experience? Uh, and really, my um, my favorite part of this is that like phone number buying experience, where uh, multiple steps are condensed into just one kind of interactive capability through the CLI. And finally, like what can your users add to the CLI? Making uh, making this kind of framework available for them to build with as well. And, uh, and use the API, but also kind of improve the experience um, is, is kind of crucial, I think, to, to fostering a community around this as well. Uh, without, uh, if you make it possible to, to add plugins to a CLI like this, then you make it possible for, P, uh, for, for other developers to tell you what they want to see in this uh, API, to provide it for themselves and potentially others, uh, and, uh, and ultimately, uh, improve that experience without having to do any further work yourself. Um, I have a couple of links for you. Um, if you want to check out the CLI, it is all open source. I will share these links as part of the slides later. Uh, but the the API, sorry, the CLI itself is all open source and available on GitHub uh, under the Twilio organization at Twilio CLI. Uh, and uh, and I wrote a blog post a while back um, uh, with uh, with five Twilio CLI features that uh, that you should know about. Uh, uh, which goes into, uh, in a bit more depth, some of these things uh, that I've been talking about with you today. Um, so uh, get out there. You've got a great API. Go build a great CLI for it. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, go build a great CLI for it. <laughs> I'd love to see it. If you do, if you are building a CLI or anything like that, do come and share it with me. I'd love to, to see what you're building and how you're, uh, how you're approaching the situation as well. Um, so drop me a line, as I said, uh, at philnash at .com or uh, anywhere on socials and uh, Phil Nash. And other than that, uh, again, my name is Phil Nash. I'm a developer evangelist at Twilio, and it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you today uh, API Days. Thank you very much. All right, Phil. Thank you very much for your talk. We do have a number of questions here for you. So um, I'm going to let you choose, actually. So you want a technical, <laughs> technical one or not technical one to, to begin with? Oh, um, let's uh, let's start with technical. Why not? Okay. So the question we have is: Was the public API you had in place when you introduced the CLI ready to accommodate all the use cases, or did the CLI drive the evolution of your public API? That's a really fascinating question to me. Oh, that is a fascinating question. Um, uh, the the API itself drives the CLI. Um, uh, so the API is always I think the API, you know, we've always used, uh, created the API as, as a platform with which people can choose to do whatever they want, whatever they need with it. Uh, and therefore, uh, it sort of uh, is, and, and that's one of the reasons why um, there are multi-step processes for things like buying numbers and stuff like that. Um, now, the CLI didn't then drive 
uh, an API endpoint that allows you to do everything in one process, uh, that's not exactly possible. Uh, so I think, um, yeah, the API was always capable of doing everything. The CLI hasn't driven any more of that, but I think that uh, the way people want to use the CLI has then driven further um, uh, experiences within the CLI. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, it does totally for me. <laughs> All right, technical one, non-technical one. We have so many, so. Oh, so many, I I, I don't know. I'm, I'm probably better on technical questions, so maybe Come that's, uh, that, that's me. Uh, things. But if you say, go, go for non-technical then, tell me, All right. ask me, yeah. ask me something non-technical. Yeah, so what measurable impacts have you seen since the CLI introduction? Yeah, um, so uh, I don't, uh, the statistics behind it are not uh, numbers that I have to hand, or I don't think I'm allowed to share anyway. Uh, but we have absolutely seen uh, a usage of it, and you can, uh, you can, for example, you can go see the installation uh, patterns on on npm for it. Uh, but we've seen uh, it installed sort of thousands of times and 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 become embedded into the uh, uh, into the processes of, of of our customers and that's kind of exciting and that's even more so like i said um i actually uh, i'm more into building the plugin side of things and so uh like the serverless plugin for example uh, does in fact you know power the deployments of uh, of major customers and i'm very excited uh, that that's uh, kind of an open source uh, part that that was added on to the api uh, and so being able to see those things in use um yeah, is, is, is very exciting. And so we, we get a lot of good feedback about that. OK. Next question is, um, how do you handle the validation in the CLI? Like, do you rely completely on the API returning you the current messages, or do you usually have a pre-validation on your CLI before, before even trying to make a request to the API? Yes. Um, so that is, uh, so both, uh, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the, the, the CLI does have a bunch of, of pre-validations uh, on it, particularly for kind of required fields and things like that. Uh, that kind that um, is mostly handled by the fact that those our API definitions have that in, information inside them. Uh, that allows us to generate uh, the the API, uh, sorry, the CLI that then can have those those validation definitions into it. But also, you know, we generate our documentation from that, which tells you right. what are a rec what are required and what the formats of particular um, uh, arguments to to API endpoints are. Uh, and so, um, I think the basis of all of this is actually to have a, a really good set of API specifications, and from there, uh, being able to generate the um, like I said, both both documentation, example code, and uh, and the CLI commands uh, just kind of falls out from that almost naturally. Um, so yeah. if I can recommend anything, get those get your specifications right in the first place, and everything else. Uh, and then you can, can probably decide well. where you want to put it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. All right. Controversial question. Go for it. Have you ever regret of using Node.js as, technolo as a technology? Just <laughs> even once. Um, <laughs> well, I'm a JavaScript developer. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bash uh, the language in any way. Um, I think the uh, the only thing that um, that I would feel bad about with that is that um, it can sometimes make installation more difficult if you're trying to get the CLI into the hands of people who's uh, who don't normally have a Node.js environment themselves. Uh, and so, like I, I said in the middle, um, like Homebrew is is one of the installation paths. Uh, but that only works on a Mac, of course. Uh, otherwise, we tend to uh, we tend to require npm, uh, sorry, Node and npm installed. So that's, I think, the one one slight thing. And I think there's work we can do to actually wrap that up into a just a yeah. You you can bundle the runtime with the CLI yeah, if you want. We haven't managed that uh, uh, okay. just yet. So that's the, the maybe the one the bad thing about it. But I think the the benefits far outweigh um, what's gone on there. Uh, in that, uh, so many people can. Yeah, get involved with it, and it's it's kind of approachable. If we decided to, um, if we decided to build it in something like Go, uh, which I know is a, is a popular thing for building CLIs in, uh, I would feel quite lost and have quite a lot of work <laughs> to do just to get up to up to scratch on it. So, uh, so I, I think I think Node and JavaScript has been a, a great platform for it, and you know, and Oakleaf as a, as a framework for it as well is such a battle tested thing from Heroku. It's been around for years. So, uh, yeah. so. Yeah, I'm I'm fully on board with the with the Node.js side of it. <laughs> oh, that that that's perfectly fine. All right, uh, well, 
this is this is it. We, we still have some questions. I'll probably send you in private, but this is the <laughs> one that I'm responding in live right now. So I wanted to thank you again for being with us today. It was a very fascinating talk. Um, again, folks, you can find Phil Nash handing, hanging out in the, the events after the presentations here. So thank you very much and have a good day. Thanks so much, Vincenzo.